We're going to be getting into brazing, and we're going to be brazing copper for the HVAC field. This is basic. This is for the new guys that's never touched a torch or anything like that. We're going to talk about safety right now. One of the things that we want to do is we want to protect the homeowner's equipment when we're brazing it in. We're also wanting to protect the homeowner's house. We don't want to put a scorch mark on their house. We also don't want to start their um, mulch on fire around their outdoor unit, and we don't want to start ourselves on fire. So what we have to do is have some little safety things in mind as we're brazing copper. One of the most important things is, is having safety glasses. When you're brazing copper and you have a hot spot or say you hit a piece of brick or something and it explodes, you don't want that stuff in your eyes. I highly recommend having clear glasses um, over the sunglasses and that sort of thing because you don't get to see your work all the way around after you've brazed your joints and that sort of thing. One of the other things that you want to have is a pair of good leather gloves, rather thick, so you don't burn your little fingers off because we're dealing with temperature 3500 degrees or better. Uh, I mean quite hot. One of the other safety features that you want to have is you want to have a good fire extinguisher. This is one of the little truck models that they put on our trucks as we uh, go out and burn people's houses up. And, no, no, I'm joking. Uh, a good little fire extinguisher will take care of any of your little nasties that might get out of control. But one of the things is you've got to be careful so you do have control over your burn. One of the other safety features that you're going to need, or I would strongly suggest making, is a little flame shield. This can be conformed, put around your copper, can be set up against the house so your flame doesn't hit the house and scorch the paint, that sort of thing. These are easy to make. You take a piece of uh, sheet metal off of a, a single wall pipe, you cut it 10 by 12, whatever, cut the corners off, Take all your little fish hooks out so you don't hurt your delicate little fingers when you're using it. If you have thicker gloves, you don't have to worry about that. But a good flame shield. You can also get from the parts house the cloth, oh, heavy woven oh, flame shields. Uh, you dip those in water. You soak them in water and they work really good. One of the other things is, is you're going to want to have a good service wrench for opening up your acetylene tank on your oxygen acetylene rig. They come out with the little opener with, with them. But as you can tell, this one's rolled around in the truck. It's gotten bent. It's uh, gotten misshaped because it's been used so many times. The head on this is much thicker. You don't have to worry about it deforming. You don't have to worry about damaging the, the stem on your acetylene tank. The other thing that you really need to use is a striker. Use a striker over a torch when you're doing it uh, or over a lighter. If you use a lighter at the end of your torch and you're settling, your oxygen's going really good and you strike it off, you have a good chance of burning yourself. And you don't want to do that. Striker is a much safer, easier, most economical way to do this. You can replace these little flints in these strikers and it's like you get five for $10. Uh, not a big deal. You want to be able to be able to grab something hot. Say you're unbrazing a dryer off of a liquid line at the condensing unit or at the air handler. You want to be able to grab it. Well, you're going to need like a good pair of channel locks. That's about the only thing that these things are good for. They're not good for taking bolts loose. They're not good for tightening anything down. All they do is leave marks on your metal, but they're good for grabbing stuff. If you were going to grab something hot, get you a pair of channel locks. You can open them up to the different sizes. And least but not least, or <laughs> least but, anyway, strongly suggest you have wet rags on hand, dripping wet, so you can wrap around your king valve at your condensing unit, you can wrap around your expansion valve sensing bulb, because when you heat up your copper, that heat migrates up the copper. Well, you don't want to burn up any of your delicate sensing bulbs, uh, sensors, any of that stuff. 
If you have electronic sensors connected to the suction line on your evaporator coils, you want to take those off because if they get heated up, it will change the resistance inside that sensor and it'll give the unit a false reading and it'll do all kinds of stuff you don't want to do. Wet rags is what you need to do. Dripping wet. Just like that. You just don't want to get that inside your refrigerant lines.